Uh, well, thank you for being here today. My name is Kiana Swain, and I'm the advisor at the University of Michigan International Programs and Engineering Office that works closely with the CEA. I have here today with us uh, John and Sylvia, and they are part of the amazing CEA team that helps us send students abroad, specifically in our office for five different locations. And the Engineering in Madrid is our latest partnership with CEA abroad, and that's why we're having this info session. Um, and I'll pass it on uh, to John and Sylvia to talk more about CA and the program itself. Good. Good morning, all. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming. We're excited to share with you all about the uh, this uh, wonderful opportunity in uh, Spain. And um, I have my wonderful colleague uh, Sylvia joining here as well. With and we'll so we'll just jump right into um, and go through. Um, we'll give you an overview of the. Uh, who CEA is, and then we'll get more into the specifics about what the opportunity is uh, about in, in Madrid. So, and at the end of the uh, presentation, we'll, be, we'll have time for you to ask questions uh, as we, um, that you may uh, have uh, for us uh, at the end of the program. <clears throat> so, um, Kira, do you just want to maybe say just a little bit about your role? Yeah, so as the embed advisor in the College of Engineering, I just help uh, College of Engineering students go abroad and I have a portfolio. And my summer portfolio is connected to our CEA partnership that we've had for many years. I think we started with our first program, which was engineering in Rome. Um, and uh, yeah, I also help uh, students uh, that try and go abroad without uh, a U of M program. Uh, so any student that wants to go with a third party provider. So if you're interested in going with CA directly and not going with uh, U of M and CA together, I can also help out with that or any other third party provider. Thank you. And Sylvia? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Sylvia Martinez, and I am the program director of CA Madrid. Uh, I have been the program director for the last 20 years. Uh, and I am the person in charge of taking care of you. Once you arrive, we'll make sure that you have the best experience of your life. And once you arrive to, to Madrid, to Spain, we'll, we'll take care of you. You'll be in good hands. And John, would you like yes. to introduce yourself? <laughs> yes, I'm uh, John Dorgans. I'm the CE representative to the University of Michigan. So I have the pleasure of coming to campus and working with uh, Kiara and the wonderful team and the uh, uh, IPE office, and um, um, we've been doing it for like 15 years, so it's it's a pleasure to be partnered with the University of Michigan. But yeah, as you're wondering um, through this uh, study abroad opportunity, you're probably wondering like who who is CEA? What CEA? What do we do? Or what are we about? Uh, actually, CEA is an organization that helps students study abroad. We help them enroll in programs uh, abroad uh, that would be a good fit for them academically wise. And then we also um, uh, provide and work with students and providing them um, housing and cultural experiences and excursions all to help you get the most out of your study abroad experience. So you're, we've been doing this for over 25 years. Uh, typically, we are uh, supporting and servicing uh, over 5,000 students a year abroad. Um, and you, you're in good hands, like Sylvia said. Um, you're going to have a wonderful experience. And uh, CEA, we're there to help you and support you all along the way. Just to give you a quick overview or highlight of CEA, uh, not only having programs in Madrid, but we have uh, programs in 21 other cities around the world in 13 different countries. Um, as uh, Kiara mentioned earlier, that uh, we partner with the University of Michigan School of Engineering in five other or five locations. Along with Madrid, we partner with you in Rome, Prague, Paris, and Buenos Aires on summer programs. And how do we, how do students study abroad? We, um, there's different ways for students to study abroad or to um, obtain their academic experience abroad is through not only study abroad programs, but also we can do internships and um, opportunities for you as well abroad, but also we do provide virtual study abroad opportunities for those who just are not able to get abroad and but still want to have a global experience. But specifically today, we are going to be uh, talking about the, the new CEA Madrid Engineering and Math program. Um, this is a brand new program for um, 
University of Michigan, but also it's, it's a brand new um, program for CEA as well. We've been in Madrid for many, many years, but this is a new academic um, uh, opportunity for students in the engineering STEM, STEM world. Quick overview. The program runs from like the third week of May to middle of July. It's eight weeks long. Uh, it's a little over $6,500. That's all inclusive. It includes your, your tuition, your housing, all the cultural activities, uh, excursions, and, and health insurance. All that's bundled together. Uh, uh, you'll be living in, we'll explain later about the housing opportunities for you. But uh, important dates for you to, to remember. Uh, priority deadline for um, the first wave of applications is December 6th. And then uh, there's applications will still be open, but uh, the final deadline for applying for this program is February 8th. Kira, would you like, maybe want to talk about the eligibility for this program? Yeah, so as a College of Engineering student, you have to be a first year student. Uh, you have to complete your first year to go abroad with us. So you have to be an undergrad. Uh, and you have to be in good standing with the University of Michigan. So we do check if you've ever been on probation. Uh, you need a 2.5 minimum GPA. We do have a petition process, but that's really the minimum we're looking for when we're screening for eligibility. There is no foreign language proficiency, so all the classes will be in English. Um, two new uh, prerequisites that we put this year are a valid passport. Um, last year, some students did not have a valid passport before they applied and did not get it in time. And so we don't want that to happen again. Uh, just because the U.S. government can take some time to issue passports. And then the other one is that we will be screening for prerequisites for your intended courses. So when you apply, you will be selecting a technical and a non-technical course, and we will be looking at your transcript to see if you've taken the required prerequisites so that you know, we know that you're prepared to go abroad and fully experience your courses. If you haven't taken them, taken them by the time you apply, that's totally fine. You can take them also in winter of next semester, but that means that we will be doing a midterm review um, in February or March to make sure that you are passing your classes. So if you apply by the a priority deadline, you're conditionally accepted uh, if everything else looks good until uh, we can do that midterm review um, in, in March or February. Perfect. So now we'll uh, go into a little more information about uh, Madrid. Sylvia? Yep. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, so let me tell you a little about Madrid, what you're going to find when you come and all that. So uh, staff, you can see two people, which is Alvaro and myself, but we are six people in total now uh, in Madrid Study Center. Uh, we have academic uh, uh, staff, housing staff, student services staff. We uh, take care of all of the areas of the program and what is included. Uh, you can see some pictures, uh, for example, like the one in the right is welcome um, walking tour that we did when we had to use mask mandatory. Now we, there's nothing like that. So it's much nicer now. Can you go to the next page, too? Thank you. So let me tell you a little about Madrid. So Madrid, as you know, is the capital of Spain. Uh, it's a really big city. Um, Sometimes it feels a little scary for you to think that you're going to be going to a really big city. There's around 5 million people, so I don't know if I'm going to be managed. Well, the truth is, is that's not the, what it feels when you're here. Madrid is super well connected. The public transportation that we have is the best in Europe. Um, students pay us for now 10, 10 euro to 20 euro per month for unlimited trips, for, for the metro, for the bus, for the train, everything. So it's super convenient. It works really well. It's clean and safe. Um, what, what Madrid has and stands out and what students like the most is that even though it's a really big city, it feels like home. You feel like the neighborhood is, you feel like it is where you belong. You go get your coffee and they know your name, how you like it. You always buy the bread or the fruit in the same place. Uh, it's a very welcoming city. We really like uh, people from other countries. So even though it's a super cosmopolitan city, it doesn't have the feel of international. You don't hear English around. The truth is that people, uh, even though it's very international, also it's very traditional. So you find here that when you need help, people do speak English. But if you want to practice Spanish, obviously you're going to have the chance to do it because everybody does and we all uh, live in the center. 
So uh, it's not a city where all the center is just for tourists. That's not the case. We all live all over the city and our students also do that too. Well, uh, I'll talk to you a little about housing later. So uh, maybe, yes, thank you. So the classes will take place in our study center. Where is it located? It's close to the Royal Palace. If you have some time and look at a map, um, of Madrid, you will see where the Royal Palace is. And right now, you see this window that I have behind, behind or maybe you don't. So right across the street is the Royal Palace. Uh, so the location is perfect. You can walk everywhere in the city center. Um, and the classes will take place here. In uh, We also have, the building is amazing. There's also a student's residence hall that where our students can stay, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, there's also a hotel. If you have family coming or visiting you, they can stay in the same building. And also the office part where that's where we are. So for students that are staying here uh, in the summer, there is a pool upstairs. So just this is a, an extra that is super nice. <laughs> um, so, okay, thank you. So talking about the courses that you can take, you can take one technical course and one non-technical course. So the, co the technical courses that we're offering are, as you can see, discrete mathematics, calculus, engineering statistics, and dynamics. So ex ex except for calculus, it has four credits. The other three classes have three credits, okay? Uh, and you can find in this in these page, as you can see, uh, the prerequisites. So please pay attention to this because this is very important, okay? Yeah. Uh, Kira, do you have any comments about the technical courses? About them, yes. Um, no, they're already pre-approved by U of M, so we submit it on behalf of the students, so the student doesn't have to worry about that. There is one rule at U of M, in order to get transfer credit, you have to get a C or above in order for it to transfer back. So that would be right. the only thing I would add from a U of M standpoint. Um, if you get less than a C, then it's like you, you, the credit doesn't transfer back. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And the non-technical courses, you can choose one from either environmental ethics, humans, culture, and sustainability, or Spanish civilization and culture. You have to choose one of these two. Okay. All the information you can also find here, but also I'm sure that Kiara, if you have questions, she will be happy to help you with that. And Kiara, do you want to talk about the, where how these credits will transfer back relative to their uh, Yeah, elected? so they will, uh, they will satisfy a specific requirement that we have at U of M, uh, some of them. So for example, Spanish civilization culture will satisfy your social science uh, designation that you have to take that's part of your intellectual breadth. And they also come for the international minor for engineers, which is a minor we run through our office. Uh, so they will count for um, that uh, minor as well. If you're interested in taking that, all our courses with CA count for our minor as well. So you can double dip. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you. Along with st studying abroad or taking these courses, um, there will be opportunities for you to learn more about the history and culture of Spain. And we do that through cultural activity and excursions. Uh, Sylvia, can you talk about what these opportunities are like? Sure. So when our students come, we want them to learn as much as they can about the city, about the culture of the country and everything. So we we also keep you busy. Uh, and so some examples of things, for example, when you arrive, we have orientation for a couple of days. We take you for a walking tour. Uh, we also have a welcome lunch. Um, all together. And then we have many activities. For example, as you can see, as well as activities, what is it? We always organize sports activities. Uh, so you all get moving. Um, those of you who work out and do like special um, uh, sports, like you're a really big fan or uh, like football or something, we help you find classes like that. But we also organize uh, general sport activities for everybody to do together, maybe at the Retiro Park at night. So everything, so you, you can interact with the culture and the locals. Um, we also take you, for example, to a cooking class um, to learn how to cook the typical Spanish food um, and follow the Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet. Uh, we also offer volunteering opportunities uh, for those interested. We also go visit, obviously, the Prado or the Real Palace. Um, the musts that you you cannot come to Madrid and not visit everything that you're going to learn in class too. And also, we offer activities in the weekends. We have we offer two day trips. 
We take you to Toledo and we also take you to Segovia. Both cities are uh, one hour away, so we spend the day. We don't we don't sp uh, sleep there, uh, and also we take you to Sevilla, which is um, two hours away in the train, in the fast free train, and we spend there three days and two nights. Okay, we have a whole weekend trip. Um, and what else? Uh, we take you to flamenco. Flamenco show. We will have our farewell dinner all together. Uh, the we're gonna make sure that you're not bored. That you're gonna make the most of everything. We also are gonna keep you in shape if you want. All these activities obviously are are uh, optional, but we highly recommend you to participate in everything. Yeah. Yes, they're optional, but they're all uh, all included in your um, program yes, price. So all included. Correct. Do take advantage of them. Um, I studied abroad in Madrid. Um, going to these places are very special and wonderful opportunities, and you'll have a you'll be blown away by the the, the beautiful beauty of these uh, sites, but also the, the wonders of um, uh, and cult learning about the culture and history of Spain too. Going to museums and and also just the fun activities such as the cooking workshops, fun stuff. Again, all yeah. included. Take advantage of them, and they'll all be yes. noted on your academic calendar uh, uh, by the time you arrive. So if you do have friends and family coming to visit you, you'll see what open weekends are available um, so for your yes. friends to come visit you. That's correct. Yes, thank you. Also housing, as you know, housing is included in all the CEA programs. So there are some options, housing options included. So what is included in the program price is apartments in a double room. So if all of you want to stay at, a, at an apartment in a double room, that's included in the program price. There are other options for those of you who might not want to be in an apartment. Maybe you just want to be in a residence hall. Uh, we have single rooms one, which is this building where we're at. Or also we very close to here, there's another residence hall for, uh, for double rooms. Uh, we also offer homestays for those of you who want to immerse in the culture and speak Spanish all the time and like eat typical Spanish food. So we also offer that. Uh, it has an extra fee. OK, all this information is included in the in our website, too. Uh, so uh, where are they located? You're probably thinking, is it going to be far? Um, they're spread out all over the city. So it depends on where you're going, where you have classes, which right now for you, it's located in the city center. We try to have you uh, in areas where you don't take longer than 30 minutes to get to a class. OK, 30 minutes, how? maybe walking or maybe in the metro, maybe in the bus. As I said, Madrid is very big, but we are all located in the center. Okay, the center is not a 20 minute walk. This is a Spanish point of view. Everything is close as long as it's 45 minute <laughs> distance. Um, so um, the location will be always where locals live. So if you're in an apartment or in a homestay, you're gonna be in a building where other locals live. So you have a, you immerse in the culture better, okay? Yes, what else is included? What's gonna happen once you arrive? Well, we will pick you up and we will transfer you to your housing, okay? We'll take care of that. After that, that same day, we typically have a walking tour to keep you awake, basically, and then for you to know the area, to get to know the other peers, and then uh, you'll be ready for the next day, okay? You'll go to bed at the time that you have to go to bed, and then you will sleep all night, and then you'll be ready for orientation the next day. Then we will also give you all the information regarding health and safety, because what we want is that you have the best time of your life, but uh, in a safe way. Um, I'll make sure that you receive all the information. Uh, I'll tell you what happens if you're sick, if you ever need surgery, hopefully not, but what anything can happen and we will cover everything. We'll make sure that you know that you're not alone and we'll take care of that, okay? So we will help you with, we'll give you information about the policies and about the packing, something important, just so you always remember if, that if any of you need a medicine, and you're gonna be here for two months, it's gonna be eight weeks, you will need to bring the medicine for the duration, okay? You're not allowed to uh, mail medicine at all. It gets stuck in customs and gets returned, okay? Uh, at the orientation, we'll make sure that you know, uh, the mo as I always say the information, the most important information you need to survive out here by yourselves. 
uh, and we'll give you information about the insurance, uh, medical assistance, emergency assistance, everything. We also have a 24 seven emergency phone number uh, in case you need it, hopefully never, but if you do, we're here to help you, okay? And of course, you will get, receive an official transcript at the end of the, of the semester. Thank you. If I may add something, one of the great things is that you also be, you'll be doubled insured, insured because you are also a U of M student. And so it's a requirement at U of M that you're also insured with U of M. So by going on a CE program, you have like double the insurance, which is one of the perks. Of also perfect, with perfect. CA. <laughs> uh, so you're, you you'll be all set for any health uh, issues that happen. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Kira. Kira, you want to talk about the, um, the yeah. this slide? Information? Yeah, so uh, now that you've been to this info session, there's other ways that you can connect with us and learn more about this program or other CA programs that we have in the office. So we have Summer Advising 101. It's an info session that our peer advisors, our alumni, uh, run. Uh, we're hoping to have an alumni from Engineering in Madrid next year as well. Um, and uh, uh, they just run uh, a more informal summer advising one on one with more of a student perspective on how it is to be to be going on a CA program and uh, their experience. And they run every Wednesday and Friday. Um, and then we also have just general peer advisor walk in hours. If you are unable to come to the summer advising one on one session, you can always stop by our office or you can make an appointment with me if you're specifically interested. Uh, in a particular program, when you make an appointment, you can select the programs that you're interested in and we can talk more about them. Perfect. Um, just a little bit more from an IPE standpoint. So uh, as we mentioned, there's two deadlines. There's a priority deadline and then there's a final deadline that are both on the screen. We have a commitment to you to review your application within a week. So for the December 6th, by the 13th of December, you'll know if you've been accepted. And for the February 8th, by the 16th, you'll know. Uh, and then you do have to confirm participation uh, by specific dates. So we know that if you want your spot or if you can give it to students, our CA programs are very popular. So we sometimes do end with a wait, end up with a wait list. And so we just want to make sure that um, if you confirm your spot, then you can get, you know, you can get your spot and go. Uh, so really that's the big difference between priority and final is just the amount of time you have to apply and the amount of time you have to decide uh, if you want to secure your spot or not. And then, as I mentioned uh, before, just very important is uh, please have a valid passport before you apply or have a receipt that proves that you did apply to a passport. Uh, if you apply to a passport after we accept you, it will probably not get there in time unless you want to pay for expedited shipping and expedited processing, which could be a hefty fee. Uh, because you're there uh, less than 90 days, you will not need uh, a visa if you are a US citizen. If you're not a US citizen, you will have to check with your country. Um, just to make sure that you don't you don't need a visa. And if you do need a visa, we have some resources for you uh, to just help you out with the process. Um, and then again, yeah, please know that you will need to select one technical and one non-technical course. That's how our partnership works uh, with CEA. So you can't take two technicals or two non-technicals, which some students have tried in the past, but um, that's just <laughs> not how the program works. <laughs> so again, to... Uh, give you a visual on this. Go meet with the, uh, Kiara, learn about program opportunities um, uh, offered through uh, IPE office to select and apply uh, for the program. And once you get accepted into a program, um, once everything's uh, ready on that side, you confirm that you wanna go to, let's say the, on the Madrid program in this case, then at, at a certain point, Kiara then will give all the student information to CEA. Um, CA will then take you from point A to point Z through the rest of the enrollment process to get you ready for your program abroad. And then we'll tell you the time and date to arrive into Madrid and Sylvia and, um, and team will pick you up at the airport and get you ready for your summer of a lifetime. So once you get um, connected with CEA, each of you will receive your own like your own little portal, uh, we call a MyCEA account. Basically, it's a checklist of all the uh, additional information you need to provide us along with the deadline dates. Um, a lot of these things you can uh, review and check off uh, your to-do list quite quickly, um, but 
and it's there's lots of information, additional information about the program and CEA and other things uh, on your personal porter, which is available to you 24-7. Then Kira, do you want to chat about the yeah? So another amazing thing about going with both CA and uh, U of M is that you have doubled the opportunity of applying for scholarships. So you can apply to some COE scholarships and then some CA scholarships. Uh, but we specifically have a COE Go Global Fund. You do not have to apply for that. The minute you apply to an application with IBE, you're automatically uh, considered for the COE Go Global Fund. It's our biggest fund, and we try to give a little bit amount of money to everyone based on, on need. Um, there's also a first-generation um, scholarship that we run with our office. And then we also have blogger positions. So every year we select one blogger from each program. Um, the blogger uh, needs to blog once a week, once or twice a week, and just document their life in this particular case in Madrid. And you get a biweekly stipend. So it's like you're working with IPE while you're abroad and um, just some extra money that can help you with like food or excursions, shopping, just anything you want to do while you're in Madrid. Um, and then uh, CA scholarships, which I know John can talk about. And then there are also external scholarships uh, on our website that you can look at that are government scholarships from the U.S. Department of State or other organizations um, that you can check out if you're eligible for. Perfect. Yes, and Kira mentioned the uh, CEA has scholarships as well. Um, we have lots of different categories you can fall in, uh, available to you. There's a category for just about anybody to uh, fall in, be eligible for. Very simple. Take Take the time to apply. It's amazing how many students don't apply for a scholarship. There's money out there. Um, and all you basically have to do is fill out a short application and then a short, uh, complete a short essay uh, uh, on a topic that we provide you. But uh, there's many different categories just about anybody can fall into. So again, what's next? After you've learned, got a, a lot of interesting um, information provided to you today, Go, go meet with uh, Kiara, schedule a time to meet with her, go to the info sessions. Um, they'll give you all the information, both on the University of Michigan side of things, but also information about CEA. Um, also, there's opportunity to learn more about the program through our website. And also, I like telling students, um, we got uh, student blogs that are on our website. And if you uh, drill down to um, Madrid, you'll see a lot of student blogs and blogs uh, that uh, students have uh, written and provided us uh, over the, the years and give you, kind of help you peek behind the curtain, what to like, what's the student experience like on the, uh, on site. Uh, they'll give you travel tips, what their apartment's like, et cetera. There's a lot of interesting, interest, interesting uh, information on those student blogs. Also follow us on Instagram. You can see, for example, today we have a soccer game. So we'll post photos of that. So it's, it's really cool to see what we're doing and you'll probably get excited. <laughs> And here are some photos from, from uh, students from uh, past programs that have gone abroad with us in, in um, uh, Spain and Italy here. So, oh. um, so yes, this, uh, we open it up for questions here. We've provided you a lot of information, but if you have any questions, we're happy to chat with you now about them. Okay. 